everybody and welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. Today we're bringing you the 10 at 10 for September 19th of 2024. Yeah, so starting off we have this uh, deciduous azalea, it's called a rising sun. And um, what's really cool about it is that it has beautiful um, yellow blooms in the late spring. It's just a stunning, um, you know, different um, type of azalea to put in your landscape. It has that warm hue to it. And um, just always nice to have something to attract the bees and the butterflies. Yeah, that's for sure. This was a rhododendron austrinum. So it's one of those native azaleas that was actually found in the wild. So this is a wild selected rhododendron austrinum by Earl Somerville. Earl Somerville has introduced so many amazing azaleas to the nursery trade. And this one is no exception. I mean, it just has those yellow trusses that just hang across this in that late spring to early summer time frame. Being this is a rhododendron austrinum too, it is extremely vigorous. So it, it, it establishes in the landscape really well. And it, it grows in many people's gardens very easily. It's gonna be very heat tolerant. I mean, rhododendron austrinums are notorious for being one of the easiest of the native azaleas to grow. If you've had trouble with native azaleas before, fret not. This is gonna be rising sun that's gonna be able to be easy for you to grow and easy for you to enjoy those beautiful blooms of the native azaleas. Yeah, and I just love, um, you know, it being a wild selection, it does have that more natural feel. I feel like it's something you could just stumble upon when hiking. So it's really great for if you um, are a more organic style of a garden. Guys, next up, we've got a Serbian spruce. This one's pretty unusual. This is Picea omerica riverside. Yeah, and one of the things that makes it so unusual is the beautiful shape that it has. It's a pyramid shape with undulating branches, so it has a really whimsical texture to it. It does, and it's very pyramidal, but it's also fairly narrow, so it fits in a lot of people's landscape. It's easy to use, and being a Serbian spruce, it has this sort of blue-green hue to it, which gives a unique color in the landscape as well. I mean, that narrow shape, think about using that as a screening plant, think about using it as a specimen. You know, take something like a yellow, like summer gold Japanese maple and pair that with this. You're gonna have a nice evergreen backdrop to really pair off with the summer gold and the yellow color. Y'all, this is such a unique tree because of the shape of the branches. I mean, literally the branches go down and then sort of point back up while still going upwards and narrow and pyramidal. So it's, it's a really unique tree. Yeah, especially for winter interest, it's so difficult to find something that still keeps your landscape fresh, but this is a really great tree for that. Okay, what do we have next? So here we have a Yuki Gesho. Um, this is a hydrangea that um, is about part sun to afternoon shade. So um, it's really great for if you have um, a little bit more, uh, you know, coverage in your landscape, but still want something that's really stands out with the variegation. Yeah, this is one of the hydrangeas that really attracts me because I'm a foliage person. And this has extremely attractive foliage. The leaves are green, but with white speckled variegation throughout it. And so it's one of those plants that really just grabs my attention. I, I, I run to it because that variegation is so prominent. And this is hydrangea paniculata. So this is a panicle hydrangea. One that means you're gonna have some beautiful blooms on top of being variegated. Also, it means that this is a hydrangea that can do well in the Midwest where you have a more alkaline soil. So it can also do well in the acidic soils, but it can also perform in that more alkaline setting, which is really impressive for having hydrangea that can do both. Yeah, you know, that is really impressive. I was just um, visiting my brother in New Mexico and almost nothing grows there, but I'll have to suggest that to him for the, the alkaline soil. It's impressive just how hardy it is in general. Yeah, and being that it's variegated, give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun in really hot climates but it gives you foliage interest in the spring, the summer, and the fall. And on top of that, you get those beautiful white blooms that the panicle hydrangeas are famous for. Yeah, and it has a great spread to it too, six to eight feet um, for maturity. So whenever you um, are thinking about building up your garden, um, taking up some more space, it's really nice to have something that as a shrub still carries a lot of interest. Awesome. Next up, we have a tree that's gonna sell out quickly today. Remember, our website doesn't hold it for you until you complete that checkout process. We're talking about Acer Oliverinum hot chicken. So it's very heat tolerant, so it can handle the heat it stayed in the kitchen. Um, it has these scrumptious leaves that um, curl down, so they really almost look like a, a chicken claw to me, which has a fun effect to it. But um, what's really cool about it is um, it has different stages of growth that come out in the early spring, so um, It'll have like a little bit of a red hue to it at one point, but then it has this fun um, bright green color in the summer too. Yeah, and this is a Cessalifolium selection of an Acer Oliverinum. You'll see the new growth looks more Acer Oliverinum, but as it starts going down the tree to the older growth, you start to see more of a divided 
leaf. So each leaf uh, petiole is almost looks like its own individual leaf. Gives a really soft feel. But being an Acer Oliver Random is part of our Heat Seeker series here at Mr. Maple. It's extremely heat tolerant, performs well. It actually seeks out the sunlight. And this is a very unusual and extremely rare selection. Matt and I had the privilege of going to World Maple Park in Japan, in Uda, Japan, and visiting Masayoshi Yano. And he is the one who actually selected hot tamale and hot sauce. We put the names on it here, but he selected those two selections. And this came as a seedling that we selected from the same plant at World Maple Park that he had uh, found hot sauce and hot tamale from. Uh, so we were really excited about having this unusual leaf texture, a, a Japanese maple olive random hybrid that is both different, unique, and heat tolerant. And so because of that, you know, we were trying to figure out and continue our heat seeker series. And we actually thought about hot wings, but that was actually an, an Acer Tataricum or an Acer Janala selection. And we settled with hot chicken. I love hot chicken. But, um, you know, I think also what's so cool about it, I was reading um, in zones eight through nine when it's established, you can take full sun, which that's impressive. But then it also gets to be about um, 10 to 12 feet in height. So even though it's hardy, it still has a nice broad and um, just mature look to it. Yeah, and the fall colors in hot chicken are typically oranges to reds. Uh, a nice vigorous selection that is going to be a staple in the heat of the South. You know, people think about Japanese maples, they always say, give some protection from the hot afternoon sun. Olive random breaks those rules and the fact that you actually want to give them a little more sunlight for them to really take off. So this is a, a, a tree that's going to grow more and more in popularity as part of those heat seekers as people begin to realize how heat tolerant and how easy to grow these selections are. Yeah, so up next we have a sweet surprise for you with little honey. Um, it's a beautiful oak leaf hydrangea. Yeah, it's one of my favorite oak leaf hydrangeas because it gives you that yellow color. And that yellow con color contrasts so well out there in the garden. You know, give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun to really help this tree get established. But the hydrangea corsifolia, the oak leaf hydrangeas, are some of the showiest of the hydrangeas. They not only give you beautiful large leaves that you can admire their foliage, but they also give you beautiful blooms as well. And as this hydrangea starts getting more and more established, you'll actually start to get a consistent fall color of bright reds in the fall. That's one of the things that the oak leaf hydrangeas are probably known for being one of the best fall color of any of the hydrangeas. It is stunning to walk through the greenhouses in the fall and see them, but I also love the panicle white blooms that they get. It's so interesting to watch this one throughout the year, but then um, also I was, you know, it, it takes a lot more sun than most hydrangeas. You know, so if you have a place where you would love to have um, a hydrangea, something a little bit more traditional but still funky, it's a great um, place if you have local sun. And the yellow on this is electric. It's going to really rock it out there in the garden with just that bright yellow color. You know, this is probably the most muted time of the season for Little Honey, but this uh, selection is just outstanding. It's, to me, the springtime when it leaves out with that bright yellow is one of the most intense yellows that you find in the garden. And you can get that on a hydrangea with oak leaves that blooms. That's, that is Impressive. spectacular. Y'all, yeah. next up we have Acer Palmetto Miss Piggy. Yeah, so Miss Piggy is just an extremely cool maple. And the fact that um, it doesn't have opposite branching uh, petioles, it actually um, kind of has a twirl effect when they first come out that makes this a little bit curly. And um, it's also super cool in the early spring whenever the petioles come out they have a little bit of a pink hue to them, which is just such a cool thing to see. And out of leaf, it can almost look like a cacti. I mean, some of our photos on our website, people said, you know, I thought it was going to look more cactus-like, but then when you see this out of leaf, it really does. You can even see how this will have even some fasciated branching. And it's just so interesting how the buds just are malformed and go in all these different directions. And they can sometimes curly cue like a pig's tail. And that's where it gets the name Miss Piggy. It was a selection by our good friend Dick Vandermatt in Holland. And for a unique Japanese maple to have in the garden, it's excellent. For a unique uh, tree to possibly turn into a bonsai, I mean, this would be a really fun uh, selection to do because the buds come from all different directions. You know, for me, this is a specially unique selection that I think more people need to be growing. I agree, and I think especially um, with the second flush when it turns that salmon color, it's just so cool to watch throughout the year. And um, they even have that little bit of purple on the edges too in the 
later spring. So it's just a really cool one to watch, um, see how it grows. And of course it has beautiful fall color as well. Yeah, and at a height of six to eight foot in 10 years, it fits in many people's garden. One you should check out quickly today because it will sell out quickly, Ace Palmetto and Miss Piggy. Y'all next up, we've got liquid ambar. So it's a sweet gum called Slender Silhouette. But they have such a fun uh, texture to them. Their leaf has a glossy hue to it. Um, so it really does shine in the sun. Uh, we actually have one planted um, just a little bit further down the parking lot. And it's one of my favorite things to see as I'm coming down from work because it has such a nice contrast with the bright blue sky. Yeah, Slender Silhouette has adds a lot of vertical interest in the landscape and garden. We're talking in 10 years, 25 to 30 feet in height by about four foot in width. So, I mean, it stays extremely narrow. It fits in a lot of small spaces, but it gets out there. And because of that, it adds verticality in your garden very well. This can be used in a number of different ways, but vertical interest is underutilized. If you put something vertical out in the garden, it keeps people looking all across the garden and being able to appreciate the whole garden across because they're looking at the height that something like slender silhouette can provide. And the narrow shape gives a good contrast and a good contrast in the shape of many other trees in the garden. Yeah, and they have such a beautiful fall color too, that red orange. So it is, you know, the, it's kind of like a cone of fire in the fall. So it's really fun to see. And uh, like you mentioned with the vertical interest, it's just such an interesting um, texture and, um, you know, line to add to your garden. Yeah, this was a selection that was found by Don Shadow in Tennessee. He's very famous for introducing a lot of really cool plants. He also had tons of cool animals. Like he collected hoofed animals. He had uh, all these, you know, roosters and birds from all over the world and all these hoofed animals. It, it was crazy. But this was one that was found on the side of a railroad track. Oh, that's just, so fun. <laughs> you know, it was just stuck out. He, he saw it one day and saw its narrow shape and it's like, you know, that's, that's interesting and started producing it. And this sweet gum is now used in landscapes all around the world. Well, lesson learned, pay attention to the railroad tracks. So up next, we have um, a gold digger, a questionable profession, but not a questionable tree. Um, it's a beautiful yellow coral bark maple, and it's just so fun to watch throughout the year. It has um, a bright yellow color in the summer, but then it kind of changes to a more cor uh, corally color throughout the year. Um, and just contrasts with the bright green leaves so nicely. Yeah, the bark interest on this is outstanding. It's a really nice winter interest tree that can provide some unique colors during those drab winter months. The early spring color on the leaves themselves, though, can be a little bit of coral pink. Uh, this is a selection. We were giving a grafting selection, a grafting class at the J.C. Rouston Arboretum in Raleigh, North Carolina. And one of uh, the members of the J.C. Rouston Arboretum, Laddie Munger, said, I've got a tree with yellow bark that you need to be grafting. Well, we couldn't make it down there on that trip, but he mailed us photos of this selection. And it was a chance seedling from a coral bark that he'd found at the J.C. Rouston Arboretum that really stood out with that unique bark color. And in the shade, it can give you just bright, you know, just some unique shades of yellow in deep shade, but with a little bit of sunlight, you start to get more of that coral color on the bark. Uh, the thing that drew me in the most about the selection though, is that spring interest in the early spring really stood out for one of the bark selections because not many of the bark selections have a unique spring color like Gold Digger does. Yeah, and, you know, I can really see it pairing nicely in the winter, playing off some of the more yellow conifers, but then also uh, just anything really that has that, um, any conifer that has the dark green hue too, so. And, and Gold Digger itself, we end up getting about that eight to 10 foot in height in 10 years. You know, like you were mentioning, playing it off of an evergreen, that's an excellent way to plant it in the landscape. I like to put these somewhere where you have a backdrop behind it that will really contrast off the bark especially for just vision or for photos. You know, it's something like having a planting up next to a building. You can really see that winter bark with the contrast of the building during those winter months. Um, planting an evergreen back behind it, that's also an excellent way just to add that contrast. I'd agree. It's beautiful and it also has such an open and welcoming canopy that it's really um, just a beautiful tree to walk into. Yep. So next up, y'all, we've got seedlings from Acer Palmatum Makawi Atsabusa. Yeah, so um, a lot of these already have grown for about three years. So what's really nice about it is you're getting a nicely matured tree, um, but then also they're great for bonsai. And um, that's kind of one of the things that makes uh, the seedling stand out so much is how slowly it grows and how um, it gets this twisted and knotted bark to it. 
And this is seedlings from Makawi Atabusa. So th these have all been selected for having that tightly layering habit, but there is a lot of variation. And some of these have different colors in the spring. Some may leaf out orange, some may leaf out green, some may leaf out red, some may leaf out pink. It's hard to tell, but just on these two selections that we're looking at here, this one here has a little bit larger leaf. This one has a much tinier leaf and a little bit of, of sort of pink red color on the new growth. So I would assume this may also have some spring color. Uh, it's a grab bag with these though. We don't really know what you're going to get until you get it. And I think that's one of the enjoyment about having a ceiling from Makawi at Taboos. It's something that's beautiful, unique. You know it's likely going to be a dwarf with that tightly layering habit. But other than that, you know, you get a little bit of variation. And it's a fun surprise. And, um, you know, it's also just Macaws are always stunning though. So that's one thing that you can count on is that beautiful palmate shape and then um, that nice layering habit, very compact and thick. So there are, of course, you know, some variability, but it's also just a beautiful Macawa too. And these are going to sell out quickly. These are really popular with the Maple Mafia. So make sure you check out fast again because they do sell out quickly. Now, we've went through nine of the 10 trees on today's 10 at 10. There will be another 10 trees that are in that email. You can sign up for that email on mrmaple.com. The last one we'll be talking about today, though, is Acer japonicum in its pumpkin. Yeah, it's fall, y'all, so we're getting you prepared with this beautiful uh, maple. Uh, what's really great about it is it has these beautiful moon-style uh, leaves that get about as big as a dinner plate in some cases, so very showy, very serrated. Um, but they also have a beautiful uh, red-orange color in the fall um, and the early spring. The leaves have um, still a bit of that orange tone to them, but they turn uh, bright green by the summer. Yeah, and that's what I like about this selection. It has that big leaf like a pumpkin, and yeah. then you get some of that, those pumpkin colors on it as well. Uh, we've got a gorgeous one at Maplewood Gardens. And one of the things that's impressed me about Emmett's pumpkin is its vigor. It's possibly one of the fastest growing and one of the most heat tolerant selections of the Acer japonicums for us here in Western North Carolina seems to take off, really get some good size to it. And, you know, it makes a tree that's going to be in that 10 foot range in 10 years, getting about a foot of growth per year on an Acer japonicum selection, which is unusual because a lot of times you're in that eight inch range on most japonicum selections. Uh, I'm just in love with the japonicums. They give you fall color that's very unique, that's very different and they give you a big platform to really show off that fall color on those large leaves. And something else that's cool is a lot of times uh, the leaves will have this curled edge to it and the new growth will also have a bit of a curl. So this is just a fun one to watch, fast growing and um, you know, pumpkins native to the Americas, it could be native to your garden. And we've got some good sized two gallons right now. So take advantage of these two gallons of Acer Javonicum in its pumpkin today. Y'all, that's our 10 trees that happened today at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on MrMaple.com. You know, we always get people asking, they say, they're not on the website yet. It's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time when they get listed. We appreciate y'all so much. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.